Good morning. Uh, lovely to be with you on this Sunday, and we're at my desk again. And um, if you hope you enjoyed the all-age service just previously, if you've been there, um, this is now the adult sermon for this Sunday, and we're looking at the story of Jesus and Peter. That first bit in Luke twenty-one, where uh, Jesus appears, third resurrection appearance, and the miraculous catch of fish. Now you can find that in John twenty-one, verses one to fourteen. Let me pray, and then we'll read together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're free now to look at your word together. We pray that you'd open our hearts, that we might understand how it applies to us today, and that you would help us to see Jesus more clearly. And we pray this in his name. Amen. So John 21. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and they got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him after he'd taken it off and he jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them. And he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Well, do keep that open uh, in front of you if you've got your Bible there. um, uh, We might like to look at that together. Um, I wonder how your... um, coping with this waiting time because I think we're all waiting we're waiting for kind of lockdown to end and for things to go back to what we might perceive as being normal and at the moment we don't know how long we're waiting for Uh, if I think back to when my daughter Lydia was born that was another kind of waiting time because you you're obviously you're waiting nine months for a baby to arrive but when you get to the due date you're expecting the baby to arrive then but when it goes on for 14 days after the due date you're thinking well it could happen today And then you're thinking, well, it could happen today. And you're living in this um, expectant time of something very important about to happen, um, but it hasn't happened. And it could happen the next day. It could happen the next day. What do you do with your time whilst you're waiting like that? Well, you know you've got to be prepared for that thing to happen when it arrives. (laughs) And of course, there's great joy uh, when the baby is born. But until that moment, you are very literally waiting. One of the ways I've been um, using time, I guess, at the current situation is I I found myself going back to stuff that's familiar. So I've played my viola far more than I have in in years. I've got it out. It's open behind me. You can see it just over my shoulder and I'll come in and I'll practice some pieces and so on. And I haven't done that for a long time. It's because actually time's slightly different. There's slightly more space at home. And so I'm going back to what's familiar. Now, Peter and the other disciples, there are seven of them mentioned here, have gone back to Galilee. And of course, they've gone back home after the Passover, after um, the crucifixion of Jesus, after his resurrection appearances in Jerusalem. There's been two of those that John has mentioned. And of course, they've gone back to Galilee, but that's because Jesus has told them to. If you read uh, Mark's gospel, for instance, um, or or Matthew's gospel, the angel says, tell the disciples and Peter to go back to Galilee and and I'll see them there. So they've gone back to Galilee, but that's partly in response to the command of Jesus to do so. And when they get there, they're waiting. They're, they're kind of waiting for Jesus to appear. 
And what do you do? You know he's going to appear, but you don't know quite how or when he's going to appear because you know he can walk through a wall and appear in a locked room. So what do you do with your time? And it's Peter who says, I'm going out fishing. What's he doing? He's going back to what's familiar, um, what he used to do. And the others who were also fishermen said, oh, we'll come with you. And so they go out and the best time to fish is at night, apparently. And so that's when they go out fishing for the night. Um, they go, they've gone back to the, the familiar. And I don't, I don't blame for that. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. Because what are you supposed to do with your time whilst you're waiting for Jesus to show himself to you again? I guess the, the danger of the waiting time is that um, the familiar, the what we used to do, the kind of what we're good at and, and we're comfortable with, well, the danger is if that goes on, we can default to our comfort zone at the expense of our calling. And so I think the word for us at this time is don't, don't default to our comfort zone at the expense of our calling. Recognise that this is a waiting time, but eventually things will get back to normal and our normal calling will kick in again. I wonder... I wonder where you were when Jesus first called you. Now, now you may be saying, actually, I, I don't know what you mean. I, I, I'm, I'm interested in Jesus, but I'm not really a follower of Jesus as yet. And that's great because John's gospel um, has a number of stages. It says, first of all, in, in the early chapters, when the disciples, uh, John the Baptist points Jesus out. And Jesus says to those who are kind of looking at him, he says, come and see, come and spend some time with me. Find out about me, find out who I am. And then he says, Come and follow me. So you've seen me, now come and follow me. I remember a time um, when I was 17, I was on a cipher camp. And I remember a particular talk, and it was called The Cost of Discipleship. And the challenge from the speaker, speaking from Philippians 3, verses 12 to 14, was, um, was really about where are you going to be with the Lord in 10 years' time? You say you follow Jesus today... But where will you be in 10 years time? Well, in 10 years time, I was 27 and I was training to be a vicar at theological college. But that talk at 17 had a profound effect on me. I sat there for a long time after that talk with tears in my eyes, knowing that God was calling me to a committed uh, discipleship, a committed following of Jesus Christ. Peter uh, now and his friends, they've kind of um, gone back to the place where they were first called. If you read Luke 5, 1 to 11, you get the story of, G, uh, of, of Peter and the disciples. They've been fishing all night. They haven't caught a sausage. Again, well, you don't catch sausages, you catch fish, okay? They haven't caught any fish. And uh, Jesus, uh, again, realising they haven't caught any fish, says, um, go cast Go out, cast your nets into the deep. And, and, but we've been fishing all night, says Peter. And Jesus says, but then he says to Jesus, because you said so, we'll do it. So Peter lets his nets down and they catch so many fish that the nets are being ripped apart because there are so many fish. They have the other boats come and help them. And that's the point where Peter is called by Jesus. In fact, Peter recognises, if you like, uh, at that point that Jesus is unique and he says depart from me for I'm a sinful man and Jesus says no no Peter um, I'm going to make you into a fisher of people and then it says Peter and the others they left their nets and their boats and they followed Jesus this is Peter's call and, and now he's back in the place where he was called and what happens the same thing happens again doesn't it so you get you get been fishing all night have you caught anything, friend, says this mysterious figure from the side, and they haven't caught anything. Cast your nets on the right-hand side of the boat, and what happens? A miraculous catch of fish. And, and Peter, you see, has got some unfinished business with Jesus. We know, and I'm not going to look at this week because this is next week's talk, but we know that Peter has denied Jesus three times. And here's Jesus appearing on 
the shore. It's John who has the insight to say it's the Lord. It's Peter who's the active one who jumps out of the boat to get back to Jesus because of course there is that unfinished business. He knows that. And, but what we have here is that just that picture of coming back to our calling. Such a powerful reminder to Peter of his original calling. And the challenge for us in this waiting time is to keep on coming back to our calling. Where were you? What were you doing when God first called you to serious discipleship, to a serious following of Jesus Christ as Lord? Now, maybe that's not something that's ever happened for you. It may be something that you're feeling very strongly now that the Lord is calling you to follow him. Well, we'll talk about that at the end. But keep on coming back to your calling. And maybe this time of waiting is a time for us to revisit our calling, to kind of reactivate our calling, uh, to get out of the comfort zone of the boat and get to shore to Jesus to see what he wants to say to us. And of course, Jesus is waiting. He may not be recognised. He may be uh, on the shoreline, as it were but he's waiting for us to come back to him. So don't default to our comfort zone at the expense of our calling. Keep on coming back to our calling. One of the things about um, these current days is I'm getting lots of invitations. And uh, I guess you are too if you are on Zoom. Every time there's a Zoom meeting, you get a little email saying, you are invited to dot, 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 a meeting. So-and-so is calling, uh, inviting you to a meeting. It may be your small group. It may be, for me, it may be a, a meeting with other clergy. It may be a meeting with the bishop, whatever. You're invited to these meetings. And uh, here, we've got a lovely invitation in, in chapter 21. Jesus inviting his disciples to breakfast on the beach. And this is an invitation from Jesus to a place of intimacy. And I love the picture that John conjures. There's this kind of reticence in the disciples. They then ask who it is, but they all kind of recognise it. They all know it's Jesus. And this is because, of course, Jesus is different. This is a resurrection body appearance. They know it's Jesus. And it's like one of those things where you want to stay in the moment. You don't want the moment to end so powerful that's why John included this is now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples and I think this is an invitation here to stay connected to Jesus do you remember in John 15 just before Jesus was crucified in his teaching around the last supper um, he said this in the teaching on um, I am the vine and you are the branches he said to, to his disciples apart from me You can do nothing. Now go back to the fishing. Jesus, the stranger on the shore, looking out to those guys fishing in their boats. Have you caught anything, friends? No, we we haven't caught anything. Uh, Try the right hand side of the boat. Cast your nets there. And what happens? A miraculous catch. A fish. You see, apart from me, you can do nothing. You see, Peter, you may have the experience and the skills of a fisherman. But if you want to be really fruitful, listen to me. Cast your nets where I say, and you'll be really fruitful. And I guess the challenge for us as a church, we've got that invitation to stay connected to Jesus, that invitation as individuals to stay connected with Jesus. And where are we going to cast our nets? Are we listening to what Jesus is saying or are we just going to go back to the the old way of doing things? We look forward, we're looking so much forward to gathering together as church again in St George's in the building. But the reality is, I think, that it's not going to be suddenly the barriers come down and everybody's allowed to go back together again. There's going to be some shielding for quite some time to come. In fact, 
the government may be saying, well, you can't gather in groups of more than 50, for instance. Well, what's Jesus saying to us about where we cast our nets if we can only meet in groups of 50? Does that mean we've got to be more creative about where we cast our nets? Do we do things slightly differently for a while and see what comes out of that? Certainly, as I look at um, the Resource Church and Spalding again, this is a moment to say, Jesus, where, where are you actually saying to cast the nets? What are, you, what are you saying to us at this time? So we have this invitation to stay connected to Jesus so that we can listen to him. And there's a great encouragement here because when we fish in the place where Jesus directs us, the net will always hold. The net will never break. In other words, it's a picture of the church. The church is uh, the church, the net that catches all kinds of people, and it's always big enough and expansive enough to to hold all those whom the Lord will bring. And that's really exciting. As we think, I think these are these days are um, amazing days for uh, people to really to seek God. And I think we'll find all kinds of people who've um, been turned back to God as a result of this crisis. And the net of the church is big enough to hold them and include them. And if that's you, um, you are really welcome uh, to seek to follow Jesus at St George's or just to come and see, as Jesus said, come and see, come and experience, come and get a feel of what it's like uh, to be with Jesus, to be with those that follow him. So, in this time of waiting, uh, just that reminder, don't default to our comfort zone at the expense of our calling. Secondly, keep on coming back to our calling. Where were we when we were first called and how does that still hold for me today? And thirdly, and most importantly, let's stay connected to Jesus. There is always that invitation to spend time with him. He loves to spend time with us. And he wants us to be in that place where uh, we're with him, where we listen to him, and then we obey him, uh, what he says for us to do. So I'm just going to pray as we draw this time to a close. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this reminder to stay connected to the risen Jesus. Help us to listen to him each day for our direction. Help us to remember the particular calling you have given to each of us. And for those who are seeking at this time, Lord Jesus, may you reveal yourself to them now. Please give us grace not to settle in what is comfortable at the expense of your call on our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you are one of those who are wondering what it's like to follow Jesus, you'd like to explore that. We are running an online Alpha course starting, I think, Monday, May the 11th. The slide will appear at the end, so you'll be able to take down the contact details there. Do let our office know and it's going to be run by Zoom and we'll be in touch with you um, with an invitation um, to come and see and to come and find out. So um, you're most welcome to do that and most welcome to join us online at our other events as well, uh, whether that's the midweek sermon or the all age service or the daily messages Monday and Friday. We are now going to hand over to um, Claire and Pete Prentice. So we're just going to lead us in a couple of worship songs, a responsive time to what we've just been thinking about, uh, where we can, you might want to let the worship wash over you. You may wish to join in gently and reflect on coming back to the calling that Jesus has placed on my life that, and that invitation to in intimacy and connection with him. And so... May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you that you are the same. There is no turning or changing with you. 
Whatever our current situation or circumstance, we declare you are faithful and all your promises are yes and amen. Amen. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness. You filled me with your peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can help but sing. Thank you that the work of salvation provides us with a joyful hope. Help us to be patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Let us join heaven in singing our thanks and honour to God our King who reigns on high for evermore, for he is worthy to receive all honour, glory and power. Amen. <laughs>